And he going through it, right? And so when I got to him, I was building him up. And he was at his lowest. And I was coaching him through it. And a year later, he had been in the best position possible. And she was out here struggling. Because he had gotten himself together and he was almost at the end of his divorce. And he, he was better off than he had ever been. He was in great shape as far as his finances, his resolve, his mentality. He had found a new lease on life. Friends, he was dedicated. His children had been coming through strong as far as what was going on in the hospital and everything like that. And he made one mistake. He made one mistake. And you know what that mistake was? Had a conversation with her in person. Had a soft heart for her because she was the mother of his children. And he slept with her. He let one moment of weakness upend everything that he had been doing over the past year. And literally when he talked to me the next time. He was in a deep, dark depression again, all because he slept with her. And he had reopened wounds and confirmed everything that she had already believed and that she controlled the situation and she had ultimate power over him because he got weak one night and he slept with her. And she leveraged it. And she's using that in ways that he can't even imagine. And I told him and I pushed him and I told him to hold strong. And he just, he got weak for her one night. And now I'm trying to grab this man out of this dark space because it seems like mentally he's in a worse space than he's ever been before. I've talked to so many men. I've coached so many people. I've seen people do some of the most evil things to people that you could ever imagine in your lifetime. Some of the most evil acts that I've ever seen done to people on a regular basis were women that said that they love the person that they're ultimately doing the thing that's the worst for them now. At some point, that woman told that man that she loved him. And so when I see the title of Jeezy's recent album and live stream or video that he recent dro recently dropped with Nia Long and it says, I forgive, but I don't forget, I understand exactly where you're coming from. He don't have to go into detail as to what happened with him. He don't have to go into details about what it is that he exhibited or what was shown to him as far as what his mother, but he did. And you know, the only thing that women paid attention to was the fact that A, he was talking to Nia Long and B, he just so happened to be having a conversation with a black woman. And that right there was enough to trigger them to the point to where they absolutely positively have been going in on Jeezy all day and all night long. Remember, these are the same people, the same women that say that they love black men, that they hold black men down, that they the best thing for us. If that be the case, then why is your mama weaponizing the kids against the father knowing what the best thing for the kids is? If you love black men so much, then why do you hate the black boy that you're raising? If you love black men so much, then why are your actions not a reflection of it when it comes to the black boy that you're raising? You know he need his father regardless of whether or not you like that father or not. You know he, he need his father. If you love him so much, then how come it's not even shown what your own flesh and blood that looks like you carry your DNA and is a reflection of you? How is it possible for you to show love to somebody and you don't even love yourself? How can you say that you God fearing and that you a woman of God when you're breaking the one of two commandments that God emphasized that was important in the New Testament? 
How can you love your neighbor like yourself and you hate the very thing that you are? Everything that you say and everything that you do is a reflection. That's the opposite of what the scriptures even say. But you say that you a God for your woman. That's why I keep saying, get these women out of the pulpit. What makes you think that you can coach somebody and you the one that need to be coached? You need a coach, but you coaching? How? How? How is that possible? So if Jeezy has sat down and he was talking to a white woman, or an Asian woman, or a Latino woman, how would you have reacted? How would it have been any different? He couldn't win for losing, so he decided to give some visibility to the very woman who y'all was championing near, near long, and he lost for it. You know why? Because the minute that he came back to you, the same way that that military guy came back to the woman, it was the worst thing for him. I have sympathy. I have sympathy. See, how can a woman say that a man needs to be vulnerable to them, but the very time that Jeezy is the most vulnerable to you, all I see is live streams talking about how trash he is. So he decided to show you some love. And you spit in his face. Not even figuratively, literally. And this is not even about Jeezy. This is more or less about the sentiment of what men go through on a regular basis, yet you, you continue to say things that's not a reflection of what your actions say that you are. You don't love me. You love on condition that it feeds into the thing that you think is best for you and you don't even know what's good for yourself. You say that you love me, but you won't even let me see my child. You say that you bring us up and you hold us down, but it's only because we continue to pay your bills. You say that we don't hold you down and that when we become successful, we decide to divest against you and go with somebody else. But you said that you never wanted us the minute that we first started to talk to you because you say that we're not good enough for you until we already get to the finish line. So we're not good enough for you when we on our way up, but we are supposed to accept you once we get there. So you waiting for us at the finish line. Is that what it is? You say you love us, but you open up your legs to the worst of us.